episode of B-Sides. I'm John, one of the pastors of Forum Dale Church, and I'm with my partner in crime, Pastor Rustin. How you doing? What's up? Doing good. Doing it's good Monday on afternoon. It's crisp. It's crisp. It's yeah. crisp today. We both got the flannels on because <laughs> it was cold. cold. Yeah, this whole weekend's <laughs> been cold. Yeah, I've enjoyed getting up in the morning and being, uh, you know, I don't know, I like that, uh, those fall days where it's sun sunshiny but also yeah. you can feel that you know crispness in the air and you Absolutely. can see the colors changing the leaves i love that yeah it's been we good. woke up to frost on uh friday and saturday yep and uh sunday just yesterday morning it was so cold windshields were frozen over it was awesome I know I had to be somewhere on one of those mornings. So it was it was the first morning we had frost that I can recall was Thursday because I had to take the kids to the car the carpool for school, oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, get the, couldn't find my scraper. Got the Costco card out, oh, scrape mm-hmm. it quick. <laughs> those, those poor Costco <laughs> cards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thankfully I have two. My gas card is also a Costco card, so that one's all beat up. I just leave it in the car for a scraper. Yeah, I love it when it gets cold because it's like. It has to be cold outside for it to be appropriate for Christmas lights to go up. And that's happening yep. this week on the outside. Oh, so. that's right. So it's, uh, cool. it's good that it's cold. Yeah. Okay, so enough about the weather. You preached Exodus 7. Mm-hmm. And I think it was your first sermon in the series. So yes. you got another one coming up here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so, uh, Exodus 11. Yeah. Yeah, I specifically didn't give you 12 because I wanted to do 12. <laughs> Well, eleven is, is is like the shortest chapter in the whole book. So yeah, and then twelve like, like super long. It is super long. Yeah, eleven yeah. is just a big warning. It's just a big warning. No, no, no plagues in chapter eleven. Yeah, yeah. Darn. <laughs> so you made you made a comment um, in the opening sentences of your sermon that I wanted you to maybe tease out a little bit more, and it kind of echoes what I've been repeating that that um, Exodus is, is not just about what happened, it's about what happens. Mm-hmm. And you kind of you kind of distilled that down to say it's about what happens when a, a people or a culture abandons the truth. So it's not just about what yeah. happens, but it happens when, a, when this specific thing happens, when a, a nation divorces itself from the truth, this is what happens. So do you tease that out a little bit? Yeah. So... Um, I and I I in particular emphasized the truth lie uh, as as kind of like you know what's what's really happening is you uh, people are abandoning the truth right and so what are they doing if they're not if they're abandoning the truth well they're necessarily going after lies yeah right and so um, Egypt is a you know we look back on these ancient cultures and we just think oh that was just normal for them to have all these uh, pagan gods they worship. But at, at the heart of every single culture that starts worshiping some pagan god is the, 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 the seed uh, of a lie, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's somehow, in the, in the, in the, especially if you, you know, believe like we do, that uh, in the um, scriptural history, right, that, we, that everything goes back to Adam. And then after that, everything goes back to Noah. Right. Yeah. So no, like, there's a historical foundation of everybody knew where they came from. So that means they had to at some point turn. Right. And, yeah. and I'd say in this particular instance, I, you know, of Egypt, we we talked about this in a previous episode, but they're also turning from what they learned from Joseph. Right. Mm. So there's a yes, there's a rejection of the truth that happened in Egypt's history. Yep. Um, but what happens when you reject the truth is on display for us in the culture of Egypt. And how, how, how do you see that? What are the specific like evidences, the, the signs of that? I think that, um, uh, signs of that would be, um, you know, I, I have to just apologize. All of a sudden my headphones started playing Gregorian chants and I have no idea why. <laughs> Sorry. So I like paused and I was like, what is going on yeah. here? So if that happens again, I will let you know. So okay. uh, I don't know. So, okay. So what happens we see on display? So you see 
I mean, in the plagues, the 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 way that God is exposing the lies of mm. Egypt by going after the gods, right? Yeah. The gods yep. of Egypt. So you see a myriad of different gods being worshipped in Egypt. You see a myriad of different, um, and, and and it's like the posture towards the god is gods are one of placating in order to get my way in the world, right? Because yeah. we've yeah. we've rejected the sovereignty of God, through whom all gifts and goodness and kindness comes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. So, I, I mean, you kind of see, you see this in, if you know kind of where Egypt is at in terms of just an ancient people, but then you know that the plagues are going after their gods, you kind of see that there. Another thing is you, you see is that, you know, Pharaoh, because Egypt has rejected God, Pharaoh himself rises to this position of, well, mm-hmm. uh, this position of being a, a deity of sorts, oh, right? Yeah. And that's... Yeah. That reminds me of, I feel like we've talked about this before in the past on previous B-sides, but, you know, this idea that when you remove God from your framework of authority, yeah. well, it's always going to be statism that rises to the top to take over that position of authority, ultimate authority. Yeah. And so you see that happen with Pharaoh, and you see that happen uh, with his, you know, he's just, you know, he, he acts like God. I'll take, I'll take life and do what I please with it. I will... Yep. make slaves out of whoever I want. And it's interesting because uh, the, you know, he's n- obviously uh, humans make terrible gods and you have <laughs> a, I love We're not even very said. good humans. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> the worst humans try to become gods. So they're, 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 you know, but it reminds me what you said. And I think the first sermon, which is, you know, weak men are, uh, you think that strong men are bad, just wait until the weak men come, right? Yeah. That and was Jordan Peterson, I think. Yeah, and I th- yeah. I think there's you know th- th- I hope I hope we get to talk a little bit more about weakness because as we talk about the messengers later, because there's a kind of interesting paradigm uh, or a paradox of weakness and strength that I think needs mm. to be addressed because I think that Pharaoh ultimately is a weak man, but he's acting like a strong man that needs to get yeah. shamed by yeah the the weak things of God, mm. and but you have. I mean, he's basically um, being trite and being uh, ruling with a, you know, an iron fist. And, you know, his kingdom is suffering. His people are, uh, you know, being brought along in this kind of lie. So, I mean, I think that you see deterioration of an entire culture whenever this happens. And I think you can see... I mean, this is this is our current trajectory as a people now. So, yeah, Exodus is about what happened. You know, it isn't just about what happened, but we can see these patterns emerge, where I mean, in history, where a people reject the truth, and then they, you know, what's inevitably going to happen is the state is going to get really big. The um, morality is going to go into the dumps because we're worshiping all these different gods that are. Mm that are dictating different, different moralities that are perverse. And, uh, you have a culture that deteriorates into chaos. That's uh, the, that's the pattern of cultures and, uh, states that reject God and the truth. Yep. Totally. Yeah. And it's a, Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and we have that in extreme way right now because (laughs) of the, I mean, it's just, you know, if we were talking 10, 15 years ago, the idea that, you know, a boy can literally become a girl or, you know, we need to use pronouns that are inconsistent with bio, like biology. It's like, how did we, like, that's, that's the kind of insanity that yeah. happens when, and then it, and it, and it's not just that some people do it. It has to then be forced. It has yes. to be coerced that's because, right. uh, in order to keep the lie going, Right, you have yeah. to, you have to use these different forms of coercion. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, I, I, I can anticipate somebody saying, yeah, but it doesn't have to be that way. And I think one of the things Exodus is showing us specifically is it does have to be this way. That, yeah. That anytime you, anytime you, you deny the truth or distance yourself from the truth, you leave a vacuum. And yes, if you've yeah. if you've abandoned the truth, then the only thing you have left to hold on to is lies. 
Yep. And yep. if you think about like just a personal relationship with somebody, if if you start introducing lies into that relationship, right? What happens? Yeah. Well, falls well, apart. chaos. Yeah, it falls apart. You have chaos. You have untrust. And then anybody who who's um, given to lies knows that you can't just tell one lie. The lie has to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so yeah. when you when you abandon God and you abandon His truth, um, you end up having a you live in a world of lies. And as it yes. turns out, it takes a lot of a lot of leaders to keep enforcing <laughs> those. Yes, and those think lies. And not just. And, and bodies, whole entire bodies of knowledge too, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. everything from the way statistics are used to origins of the human species, right? Yeah, like yeah. You, the, we are living in a time of mass uh, lie production. Yeah, and I, and, you know, I think that sometimes one of the things that's shocking is how uh, all it takes is you know in an institution that you know you know, with a fancy name to, to say something, right? With some letters. And then every, yeah, with some letters. And then <laughs> it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter what it, what it is. It's like yeah. people believe it. The whole like trust the experts thing yeah. is, is, a uh, is an interesting uh, component here because mm-hmm. what, you, what, what, what happens when a culture is giving up the truth is that the experts all become, uh, party men. Liars. They all become yeah. liars. Exactly. Professional high grade e- extremely proficient liars yep. <laughs> yep absolutely so you have you have yeah so there's there's i think we're living during a time right now where um people don't people are suppressing uh the truth that like statistics are an interpretation of data not just facts you know what i'm yes. saying yep. so people you know, all it takes is one person to, you know, or one institution to put out a study and to make an interpretation uh, on some data. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden that becomes a fact. But yeah, data doesn't work that way. Data is just the raw stuff. And Absolutely. then people in, people impose upon data. I think in particular of like, like, you know, we must, must support the ideology of transgenderism. Otherwise people will, will kill themselves. Right? Right. Yeah. It's like, because of the data and it's, it doesn't really work that way. In fact, the right. data, the most basic reading of the data is don't promote something that, uh, that people actually be- becomes a fad that leads to suicide because people are Absolutely. believing it. Yeah. yeah. That, the, when it comes to the, the nature of uh, data and research, like it, it takes a lot of time to do that research. Yeah. You're talking about years to know where you're, whether you're dealing with correlation or, Something causation. like causation. Yeah. yeah. So the people who are making these claims statistically are, are being quite foolish because yeah. nobody in a genuine scientific um, setting is going to approach data that way. Yeah. And I mean, also, like, we had the greatest case study of the failure of the statisticians in the last three years. With what, what, was, the whole, what was it? <laughs> what was that the whole thing? You know... <clears throat> COVID, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, anybody who says trust the experts, I want to go and look in the eye and say, did you get a vaccine? And they say, yeah. Did you get COVID? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. sorry, man. Go? Yeah. Sorry, man. The yeah. experts were wrong, apparently. And you're proof. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I think that there's lots of reason to think that, I mean, think that we are in a similar situation and i think that what we're seeing happen is just the cultural wide scale of something like a romans one Mm -hmm. right what happens when people suppress the truth and um are given over to their desires and what you see at the that whole passage where paul's describing it's always interesting when i read romans one i'm like is he talking about a specific event or is he talking about what what happens you know what i mean because yes because he makes it sound like it's a past tense thing that happened Mm -hmm. and of course it did happen but like he doesn't God gave them over versus God gives them over. Yeah, like who are these people he's initially talking about that exchanged, mm-hmm. you know, the, the women exchanged the natural uh function and use of yeah. the man for each other. Like is is he just or is he just saying this generally is what happens? Yeah. And I, I think it I think mm. it's probably both because there was, you know, had to be a precedent, but it's yeah. it's it's always interesting when you read that and you go this is just kind of what happens when when that ha- when 
when it happens. It's not just about what happened. Yeah. It's about what happens. It's, exactly. So exactly. There you go. There you go. Okay. I want to move on to um, the, the, the uh, obedient messengers. Because you had a lot of fun kind of painting that picture. That on the one hand, you've got Pharaoh and uh, the sorcerers, which maybe we'll come back to you in a little bit if we have time. Because they're really enforcing Pharaoh's lie. Right? That's kind of their job. But you also have got Yeah. But you also have got these these unlikely messengers, these octogen octogenarian <laughs> eighty year old messengers. What's up Come with in. those with those stinky guys? Oh man, those stinky sheep sheep herders. Uh yeah, I mean it I I, I talked about how God uses the weak things to shame the strong, and it's kind of on display here with Moses and, and Aaron. You have these guys that are 80-plus old. Yeah. Most man in the world. And tell hey, you're doing things wrong. Let my people go. Oh, and then make threats. And it's uh, it's kind of a setup for, I think, a, a good laugh. And one of the things I emphasize is that it is supposed to be. It's just not the laugh that you think. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. God's laughing. <laughs> He's, right. This is the punchline. Is yep. This is this is this is all it takes for me to take you down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, imagine you're 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 going to some like big debate or something, and uh, there's a showdown between the powers that be, and so you've got an entourage and a limo and everything on one hand, and then you've got these these guys in walkers. <laughs> yes, they- <laughs> <laughs> coming up. Say, we're gonna we're gonna throw down here. Yeah, and at the end of the debate, it, the other guy is just totally decimated. Like that's that's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> with Pharaoh. Yeah. So so what is it about those guys? What is it about Aaron and Moses? You talk so, about the secret sauce. Yeah. The so the secret sauce that I mentioned is that if you look at this passage in particular, like Exodus seven, it emphasizes like four times that what they did is they just did whatever God told them to do. Mm-hmm. Right. They're, they're nothing special. They're old guys and they just show up and do the things that God says to do. And one of the interesting things is, you know, you might like, this is why I think it's important to like take into the humor of God into account here, because God didn't have to do it that way. Yeah. Like, why did he do it that way? And the only answer I can give is he wanted a holy laugh at the expense of the powers of Pharaoh and the, you know, all the idols he was going to take down. Right. Yeah. And, yep. and, and so, but these guys to go speak to Pharaoh and have one of the things I said is that the, these massive kingdoms of, of lies is, you know, if God is for you, who can be against you? Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that, I mean, if I can steer it a little bit here for something that, that I didn't get get a chance to get into. Go for it. But I kind of like hinted at it a little bit is, so you have, uh, you have on display here weakness versus perceived weakness versus perceived strength. Yeah. And I, I think that, you know, and I wanted to emphasize what we read in scripture, which is that God bring to nothing the strong and uh the the foolish things to shame the wise right and the things that are not right yeah and those things that are and 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 that is a biblical thing we see that over and over again and yet i think that sometimes that that way of thinking can be uh or that 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 tr- scripture truth can be kind of interpreted to mean something it's not intended to mean like okay. so and I, what I mean by that is, uh, um, so weakness, you could, if you took that teaching and you said, okay, so that means we should, we should, uh, flip it on its head and all of a sudden glorify and pursue weakness, uh, by being lazy and by, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like there, uh, and I think that sometimes that's a really attractive thing. Cause if you are, if you are like prone to laziness or prone to, you know, I'm just thinking about like, you know, it's not about physical strength, so I'm going to be lazy, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This guy does that stuff.
the scriptural calls in different places to be strong, like act like men and have courage, right? Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with... In comparison hey, Rustin, to, yeah, I'm gonna cut you out. I gotta interrupt you for sure. a minute. You're, I can't hear anything. You can't hear is, anything. Is your mic good? Hello. Yeah, mic's my mic's good. Okay. I don't know if it's the upload or I just want to make sure that we're not. You missing. can't hear me at all. Well, I I for there for a while. You've been cutting in and out for probably the last five minutes, oh. and I'm just kind of ignoring it. But it's definitely gotten oh. worse. Weird. No, it's all good on my end. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean the, so how do you, how do you make sense of that, uh, weakness ver like the call, like the fact that God loves to use the weak things, but also the call to be strong. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, you don't, you don't see Aaron and Moses doing nothing, right? Exactly. Yep. So they have, um, like you said, a perceived weakness, which is like their age and it's the two of them and they're representing an oppressed and beaten down people, you know? And so the, so the, the question is what, what leverage do you have, right? What negotiating chips are they bringing to the table? Yeah. This is Bloopers. like a blooper episode. Did you see it going down earlier? I did see it going down earlier, and then, uh, I don't have still have no clue how the uh, the uh, the Gregorian chant started. That's really funny. All right, you good? Can you hear me? I'm good. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't fall earlier. About ten minutes earlier, I just started doing this. I saw like, that. I caught it and I'm like doing the no the no look Titan on the side because <laughs> I've got this thing jerry rigged on my desk. <clears throat> so professional. Oh man. Okay, I forgot what we were talking about. Moses snared in the so weakness. We weakness, yeah. Yes, the perceived weakness. There's something else interesting about that that um, I don't think that you went into, and it's one of those you don't really have time on Sunday to do everything, which is yeah. why we do this. Yeah. Yes. But um, but it explicitly comes up in the the uh, chapter in chapter seven, and that is that Moses is the clear, um, like leader of this this exodus. Right, Aaron is playing a supportive role oh, yeah. to yeah. accommodate Moses's weakness. Weakness, right? But it's clearly Moses, right? Yep. But Moses is not the firstborn. Yep. Did you catch Aaron. that? He's the he's the second. Aaron's the yep. older brother, right? Yep. And so you've got this pattern of Isaac, not Ishmael, Jacob, not Esau, Moses, not Aaron. I wonder, what do you make of that? I mean, that's that is that is one of those interesting patterns that always comes up. Not the older, but the younger. And I always think of that also in light of. Uh, I mean, God revealed the redemption in Christ through an older and a newer, mm -hmm. <laughs> a first and a second. Yeah, you know, it's not the not the the older didn't fulfill wasn't the fulfillment, but the 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 second was right. Yeah, the old yeah. the old the not the old the old covenant, but the new is the fulfillment of the old. So oh, yeah, that's good. There's a kind of like there's an interesting. Uh, that's why I always think about like okay, if you keep because you can you can you can trace that out and it's almost in every book, this idea yeah. of not the older, not the younger, not the, not the older, but the younger. I mean, mm -hmm. you have that in David in his, you know, his, all his brothers. Yep. You have that, um, uh, in, uh, even, even just the, in terms of the impact of Paul, right. Hmm. The late, the late born. Born apostle. late. Yeah. 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 And, uh, not that he was necessarily younger than everybody, but he was the late born yeah. in terms of coming yeah. to it, in that sense, Peter's like the older firstborn. Yeah. But yeah. Paul then ends up eclipsing Peter with, you know, the moving forward of gospel preaching and yeah. planting churches and whatnot. 
Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like it, I see echoes there, anyways, of that yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah, and it seems to play into that weakness narrative that you wouldn't expect culturally yeah. the yeah. younger and, brother it, to be the spokesman, right? Yep, he's not. Yep, yep. but he is. <laughs> yep, it's. I know that is, and not that you can really tell the difference between an eighty-three-year-old and an eighty-year-old, <laughs> but but yes, that is that is the truth. <laughs> I, I think was, I think uh, what what were we joking about the uh, I oh, think it was like on Sunday about can you imagine some some really old leader who just has a hard time putting these words together confronting major powers and expecting people to take them seriously and you were like isn't that our president <laughs> isn't that what's going on I know okay I I, know. we we digress um all right sorcery okay let's well, talk about sorcery I, I don't know that you and i have talked about this so i'm gonna ask you i'm gonna put you on the spot yeah. okay um in all the commentators that i'm reading mm -hmm. it seems like there's a division um that some people think this is sleight of hand and yeah. some people think this is demonic what 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 was your experience in kind of doing some of the research and groundwork for the sermon do you find the same yeah. thing i found that the commentaries except for the old guys like calvin I yeah. found that most of the commentaries were very sad and depressing on the plagues because there's two things that come up that I found really frustrating. One is that they did kind of, there was a, I would say you're, you're right, a, a little bit of a split, but a lot of people take this as sleight of hand on the, yeah. on the Egyptians part. And then I thought that's, I think that's silly. I think that it's, I think the easier way to read it is just that they, they did the same things. So like, well, yeah. They, that, how, how, how do you do sleight of hand with the, um, with the serpents, yeah, I know. Of, or the, is Moses' sleight of hand? I I read like three pages on how uh, I think it was uh, I think it was Kyle and Delich spent three pages talking about how well the sort the, in Egypt this there's a common thing to do like you know where you're you it's the cl cliche guy with the flute who's like making the cobra yeah. stand up. It's like you yeah. can actually there's this thing trick people do to make snakes like become rigid and then they can like release them it's almost like hypnosis for snakes which is also like weird and like kind of magic-y in my in my opinion anyways yeah. but you have so you have uh people like explaining that that's what happened so they were really snakes that just were rigid and then they like released them from their spell their hypnosis and then they and i'm like that's a lot of that's a lot of work going into just trying to make it not sound like what it says yeah, yeah. and and, and but that was the one side is like the there are a lot of people saying it's sleight of hand and the other side was that everybody thinks that like these plagues are just natural events that just so happen to occur when Moses yeah. shows up. I was just gonna say that because I was like I was just reading today for Exodus nine, and it's like and certain commentators they're consistent right like they're like oh the boils was anthrax because you had the rotting frogs and then the wind carried the bacteria and got it and it's like. Why, why are we so supernatural averse? <laughs> well, it's like it's weird because like you could imagine like there's some liberal scholars who uh, want maybe like champion those ideas because they don't believe in the supernatural. But then yeah. there's some conservative scholars who seem to yes. latch on because right. it's like, hey, see, see, this is this this is tr a true true event, right? Yeah. And so uh, I just think it's easier just to say, and I think it's uh, yeah, the, the 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 things happen the way that it's written and. I think if you try to like look like see through it to something else, it's just yes. you're not reading. You're not. I think you're missing how you should read it. I yeah. I I, I totally agree. It's like it's, it's clear the nature of it, the way things unfold, that it's here and not there, that it coincides perfectly with Moses praying yeah. and asking God to do stuff. Yep. You can't. Uh, yeah. You you you, you ruin the text actually because. All of the plagues are meant to be a display of God's power. power. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you, yeah, you. So, anyways, but you. Yeah. So you were you were making some really interesting connections that I actually hadn't thought about okay. about the modern day sorcerers. Oh yeah. So, well, these I, one of the things I, I I emphasize is that magic. The difference between magic and mir miracle, or like what Moses does and what these sorcerers do, is that it's de the the sorcerers on the on Pharaoh's side are in rebellion to God. That's the key difference, right? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. 
and and the sorcery and magic is manipulating nature through demonic power and that demonic power sometimes it's hard to know whether or not this is like this is you know something that is just done by some sort of fiat type of type of power right where it's just done or if, it, yeah. if demonic power relies upon some sort of secret wisdom that demons happen to have because they mm. understand the inner workings of nature better than humans do yeah and i and, I, and so i i'm either I, I i'm either or on that i think that it's still we the um I think listening to Glenn Sunshine a little while ago, and he talked about how the unseen realm of the of angels and demons is probably just as complex and just as big as the seen realm, right? Mm, and there are mm. things, more things going on than we realize, and yeah. they and they're knowledgeable and have these insights into nature because mm. of their by nat by, by by nature of their own, uh, you know, being. Uh, made with that you know a um maybe a higher level of i mean the heavens are higher than than earth and so like they, there's an insight that they have it wouldn't surprise me if they can it, once that insight gets married to rebellion they that's where the demonic power comes in yeah and so yeah uh, so i was i was making some links that we don't the they haven't stopped doing this the modern a, mo a lot of modern people look back on the past and think this is all just ancient superstition, but that's just kind of giving into the strategy, I think, of mm. the demonic, which is, you know, has a lot of incentive to keep themselves hidden right now, yeah. right? And so uh, I think that what we see today with a lot of the way uh, human nature is being manipulated through you know, medical practices, whether that's, you know, magically changing one's gender or yeah. whether it's uh, reducing a human being to a fetus through like, that's just lies. Right. I think mm -hmm. that's the, I think that's, I think that's the, the principal foundation of demonic mm. powers. It's like, it's, it's something done with the purpose of perpetuating the lie that God mm. is not God. Yeah. And, and so you have, uh, so I, I, I made a, I made a comment that uh, we don't, Things are the same. We've just changed the wizard's robe for the white lab coat. Yeah, and that I think was that's so good. I think that's really true. I think that I, yeah. I think that we see and 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 every one of these magicians also like believed in a myth of existence, and our myth of existence is Darwinism. And mm -hmm. um, I was actually reading. So part of my inspiration for that part came from a book by um, Rush Dooney. Uh, R.J. Rushdoony is called the mythology of science, hmm. and he has the. It's like basically just talking about how science has become as like good science is when man is utilizing God's creation in order to uh, exercise proper dominion over it, and proper dominion goes out into God's world and and learns how to wield it to glorify God. So it's done mm -hmm. in, so like technology, good technology yeah. takes the things of, of God's world. And, you know, maybe, so I gotta give you an example of like, when you fix a broken bone, that's restoring the natural order. When you yeah. craft a, a faux genitalia, that is a perversion. That is sorcery. Those aren't the same thing. <laughs> They're not the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> like, so one is one is an example of proper dominion using the powers that God has given man for his yeah. glory, yeah. right? And the yeah. other is an example of it's just demonically trying to usurp God's yeah. uh, rule yeah. that he has yeah. demonstrated in the good nature he's made. Yeah. And so we have lots of examples of this kind of magic today. And mm -hmm. it's funny because it's it, it's being purported by people who deny the existence of magic. Yeah. Right? Yep. And manipulating human nature. I think that's where we see most of it. There are other other interesting avenues you could explore, but that's the biggest one I yeah. would look at. Yeah. yeah. Well, hearing you talk about like Rush Dooney's uh, uh, explanation of it, you, you've got some technologies that are, um, that are used in, uh, in cooperation in conformity to the cultural mandate to ex yes. express dominion and to be fruitful and to multiply and to honor God. Mm -hmm. And then you have those same types of technologies 
that are used in utter defiance of the kingdom and, and what God wants to do and his desires for yep. the world. And it's not the particular technology per se, like this, yep. but it's the, yep. the purpose that it's being used for. Wielded for, end. exactly. Yeah, and I think your, your example of medicine is really good, where you've got clearly, um, when a bone is broken, God did not make Adam with broken bones, right? And so yeah, you're that's using... contrary to nature, yeah. Yeah, you're using medicine to restore something to its proper function. But yep. when that same institution and education and information is used to try and fabricate a lie in yeah. and on somebody's body. Yeah. Right? That's demonic. Yep. That's I mean, and when you and you could say also that harvesting s- body parts and stem cells from aborted babies is our modern form of necromancy. Mm. It's going, you know, go, digging up the dead in order to uh, make something better for ourselves in the future. That's, wow. I mean, that's like, you, there's, there is, there's no new tricks, just new, new dresses. There's new words. <laughs> yeah. No new, no new tricks, just new dresses. Yeah. That's really, really good. Well, have you been tracking the time on this? I feel like we're at we're at the, we're at the 36 minute mark, so we're, we're at probably the end close. Time. So yeah. I don't even know if all of this worked because of the technology. So I think it worked, and you know what's great is the next thing we're going to talk about fits really well with your next topic too. So what's that? The idea of like exposing lies or just taking down the because it's the same theme in the next plagues, right? Yeah, 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 the, yeah. Tearing down the, the the false gods, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Do you want to send us out? Yeah, let's do this. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time on Sermon B-Sides. Trust, in the meantime, trust Christ, go to church, and love your neighbor. Peace. Yeah.